Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another Zero to Hero. I just got an assignment of Vetion and I'm going to pick 35 of them and I have no idea if I will be able to finish this task because it is in the wilderness and if I get PK'd way too much I am not going to bear with this. So this is going to be my setup. It is the standard one you can find in any guide really. I mean I uh, downgraded some of the stuff like uh, I'm not using a god book, I'm using a rune kite shield and I'm using the Vigoras chain mace which is like 2.5 mil or something and yeah let's see how this goes. So I marked 19 tiles here and uh, I'm going to try to lure it all the way over here. So what you apparently want to do is you want to walk up to it, aggro it and then uh, remove walk. And then you just walk all the way to the top path right here or the top square. You stand on it and then you walk slowly to the last of these. And uh, by the way, I found a guide to Vetion on a YouTube channel called like Asuka something. I will link it in the description if you want to see his guide. And um, then when he stands right there, you're supposed to walk under him and he's going to... Whoa, 37, that's a... Uh, wait, that's not supposed to happen. That's illegal. Wait, he's supposed to walk to the right side. Why did he walk to the left side? Uh, okay, I'm going to try again. I'm not sure exactly how you're supposed to make him go to the right side. Maybe it's just um, luck or whatever, like 50-50. But you're supposed to walk under him and then he's supposed to... Why is he walking to the left side? Okay, this is a really annoying method. If, if it's just RNG, it's going to be really, really annoying to do 35 kills like this. Meanwhile, you're able to get PK'd. Okay, so yeah. This is quite tricky, I think. So I finally got the boss stuck, but uh, doing it actually can be quite RNG, it felt like. Maybe I'm just failing, but uh, I mean, I could do some other me methods than just running along the line. I just try to walk under it and just hope that it will walk to the right side. And by the way, you have to kill these dogs. There's two types of dogs. There's the small ones, and in the next phase when you kill Vetion, and he pretty much respawns or going to phase two, there will be... Uh, greater skeletal hellhounds which have even more hp more defense and all that and you have to kill them unfortunately because if you don't the boss is immune to damage so always kill them and protect from melee when you when they spawn and then after that you can just keep hitting the boss and uh, he won't attack you at all if you're using this safe spot so this is the other safe spot you can use which in my opinion is superior because it is just way easier to lure him here in my opinion so all you have to do is run up to vetion and sometimes he just decides to not follow you anymore, which I don't know why that is, but uh, you just keep him aggroed and then you run down all the way to those squares and uh, try to get him stuck by standing on the furthest left square. And uh, here we go, he's following me. As long as he's following you, you should be fine. All the way until you walk on the furthest left one. So here we go, he's following me all the way. You walk on the left one and you stand here until he stands still. So what you do now is you put your piety on, you hit him once on this square and then you walk to this other square and you hit him twice and then you have to walk back to the left one. Hit him once and then go back to the right one. You just keep doing this all the time and if you actually fail and hit him three times in the right square, he will unstuck himself which will make the kill, well you have to re-stuck him again to this spot. So. You, it's really important that you do two hits on the right one and then one on the left one. Okay, so this is the first time I got PK'd and I wasn't really that far into the kill, so it wasn't that bad. But it is, I mean, it is not too bad to escape from this place, but uh, if you die you lose pretty much the ether in your weapon, which is at least 1000 ether, which is like 200k, plus the charges that you already have uh, added to the weapon above that. So usually I bring like 400 or 500, so I'm losing like 300k every single time I die. But the problem is... It's really hard if you get teleblocked to run away. I mean, if you run away with teleblock, you have to run all the way from 30 wilderness all the way to Edgeville or whatever the edge, you know, Sierra Wilderness. But if you don't get TB, then you can react, you can just walk a few steps and you can use your glory. But I was too slow in this one and I just ended up dying. It, it is possible, of course, to tank it if you're really good, but I'm not that great at PvP, so I just got destroyed after a while. So I actually got PK'd again after coming back and I changed world a couple of times and I still got PK'd by the same people. But I actually got kind of lucky because there was two teams. One of them started attacking me and then the other team came and started killing the people that was killing me. So I could actually escape but yeah that shows there's quite a lot of people actually PK'ing here. 
First time I actually managed to get three Vetion kills without getting PK'd, so that was 250k loot, not too bad, and most of it is from the oak planks. This is one of the more annoying things, when you get PK'd when you're about to get a kill on Vetion. I mean, this guy was not really doing a good job at killing me, but the Vetion was at like... 100 HP I would say and I just didn't have the supplies to stay and get the kill get the loot and run away So I just had to run away when the boss was so close to dead And I don't actually think this guy teleblocked me and I didn't realize that until later on and I just teleported out but um, Yeah, most of the PKs are not that great. I mean, they're not coming here with like bandos gear trying to one-shot me It's people with lesser gear usually playing two or three together or a guy like this, but it's like, I can't really fight back, I don't have any PK gear or anything, so I just have to accept it and run away and reset. I did a total of, I think, 17 or 18 Vetion, and I am done with this. I have died 7 times now. Okay, I did 17 kills, and it was just below 1 million in reward, so the money is not amazing. But I've died 7 times, as I said, and I'm just kind of over this. It's really easy to do the boss, and yeah. Something I haven't done is actually get the better version of the God Cloaks. I'm going to claim those right now. I'm going to get the Sarah Domin Cloak, I think it looks the best. And I'm not sure if I have to kill the bosses again for the Samurai and the... Okay, so I have to do that. But it's enough. I don't need uh, more of these cloaks. I can just use this Saradomin one. And it is the best in slot magic cape as far as I know. Oh yeah, I have to uh, <laughs> I have to remove my staff and uh, and all that to be able to equip the Saradomin. So there we go. That's the best in slot magic cape. And I will use that for Cape Kraken right now. Another thing I actually haven't done is get a Book of Darkness. Which is just the best book for magic bonus. Oh, I didn't want to equip it. Uh, so there we go. That's all the pages for 10 plus magic bonus. And, uh, well, it's quite an upgrade from the Gothicus books that I was using before, which is just a hybrid book, I think. So uh, having a specific magic book is definitely one what I wanted. And another thing I want to get is the Eternal Boots, because I always thought these were like 30 mil, because the Primordial and the Pig Pigations are. But apparently they're only 4 mil, so that was an easy purchase right there. Getting those for quite a big mage bonus compared to the mystic boots. So now we're looking great for Kraken, so let's get into it. Just finishing off my Kraken task on three normal ones. And the loot is actually super good from normal Kraken because it is so easy to kill. I used like 70 sharks in total maybe for 100 kills and 2 million from that, which is extremely AFK as well. I never say no to. I do actually have a bludgeon to complete, only need one more piece on that one, so let's hopefully get someone sired here. I think I want to buy back in a Dragon Warhammer for this, because I have a lot of Abyssal Sires to kill, I mean 175 of them, I will be needing the Dragon Warhammer to make it a lot easier. Just hitting one spec really on him makes it super easy to get the kill. Let's see if it buys for 51.5 mil, yes it does, 51.3 mil. That took me 90 kills to get my first unsired, and the Abyssal Sire is a very slow boss to kill, so that took a very long time. Let's uh, see if we can get the last bludgeon piece with this unsired. I think the only things I don't want is a jar or an Abyssal Whip. The Whip is, you can get it from normal tasks anyways, and it's not worth a bunch. Okay, Abyssal Dagger. That is not really what I wanted, but I think it's like 6 mil, so it's not too bad it's definitely better than the abyssal whip but uh, yeah 6.7 mil i did not think i would actually get another one but with only 11 left on the task that is another unsired if we can get the bludgeon piece that's like 27 mil okay all i don't want is uh, a jar i think i can take the head and the, and the pet and the whip it's all good oh bludgeon piece last one that's 27 mil profit now i think and uh, I'm probably not going to do that, mu that much more Sire in the near future because I've completed my bludgeons. I don't have any useless bludgeon pieces laying in my bank. And the boss is very annoying to do. So uh, I'm going to take out these pieces and uh, let's make a bludgeon and make some profit. Okay, that's not how you do it. This is how you do it. Let's uh, give the bludgeon piece to him and uh, we should get a bludgeon in return in just a sec. There we go. Okay, so let's see how much this is actually worth now. The three pieces of bludgeon is 27.4 mil. So there we go, that's the task completed. And by the way, the experience that you get for each kill is 450, so the experience per hour is extremely bad. I'm actually very hyped to sell this weapon, because I think the bludgeon is going up in price, because the Nightmare of Ashihama is coming out, and I think people are actually buying this weapon for it. So let's put it up just at the lower price to see what happens. 38.6 mil. That is what I call 
a rise in price. Maybe I sold it too early, maybe it's going to go up even more, but that is a lot more than I expected. Going to end off with a huge Dagonoth task actually, 186 of them, and I'm going to do all of them on the kings. Let's see if we can get any rings. Ah, oh, dude, that is a ring, but it's uh, not the ring I want. Seer's ring, at least it's not a warrior's ring. I think the warrior's ring is like 40k right now, it's absolutely absurd. Like, 40k for a Dagonoth king ring? What is even life? But that's a serious ring, 300k. Oh, come on, dude. As I say that, I get a warrior's ring. Okay. Warrior's ring and serious ring on the same trip. That is... Uh... Oh, nice. Perfect loot. That's all I wanted. Smile. Hey, Archer's ring, 4 million. That is the most valuable ring of them all. So I'm really happy I finally got a good ring and no serious ring or uh, warrior's ring. I always tend to get them when I go to Dagonoth Kings. Another archer's ring. Okay, now I can't complain. All I need now is the berserk ring to have all of them in one task. It's not a ring, but it's worth twice as much as a warrior's ring, so... I'll show it. Mudblood staff, at least it's a unique. I do believe that's my first dragon axe ever from Dagonoth Kings, but it's 37k. And there we have my second dragon axe. <laughs> Very close to back to back, actually, so... 57kc left and uh, I finally get the Berserker ring. If I would have been an Iron Man, this would have been disgusting. All the rings in like 300kc. All the beautiful loot that I got from that Dagonoth King task, definitely going to do those in the future as well. 12 million and most of that of course coming from the rings. I guess some from the Dagonoth bones, but I don't have the Elite Diary. So I sold everything from that Abyssal Sire task as well as the Dagonoth King task. Of course I already sold the Bludgeon, but I got 29 mil from everything else that wasn't the Bludgeon. And what I'm going to do now actually is I'm going to get all my rings imbued because I have the Ring of Suffering, the Seer's Ring and the Archer's Ring, but they are not imbued, only the Berserker Ring is. So I'm going to head over to the Nightmare Zone, but this is going to be the end of this video. Hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.